I've been in a bit of a creative stump recently, so hopefully this review will be the first of many to come. I'm sorry for the delay between this and my previous video, and I'll be working on this. Sleep, my insipid angel. Crash Twin Sanity. No, not Majora's Mask like I hinted at originally. Ooh, look how crazy and edgy I am. Who knows what crazy things I'm gonna do next. Now, Crash Twin Sanity isn't like other Crash games, let's just get that out of the way. Whereas the norm in Crash games involves running forwards, spinning the ever living hell out of anything that gets you in the way, and spending an eternity cracking open crates in order to get fruit. That is, unless the game decides it wants you to run towards the camera, in which case the norm is to fall down so many holes and lose so many lives that one would suspect that Cortex is committing some sort of bandicoot genocide on Insanity Island. Twinsanity, on the other hand, is more like other 3D platformers, such as Mario or Banjo-Kazooie. I mean, the elements of the originals are there, the spinning and the crates, but the world has been opened up, essentially making the world free roam, as you are free to explore any previous locations you have been to. The way the world has been opened up is, in my opinion, a good thing. While hardcore Crash fans may bash it for changing up the formula, I find it refreshing. It also changes the amount of platforming that can be done in-game, allowing for level designs that weren't possible in previous Crash games. But don't worry, there are still running towards the camera sections, which will rapidly deplete your lives like Notch depletes money out of PC gamers' pockets. Not that the game needed these segments to make you lose lives anyway. See, one thing I've always found with Crash games is how challenging they are. I like to consider myself as vaguely good at video games. Not the best, but still good enough so I can review a game fairly. Crash games, however, have always managed to kick me in the balls. I don't know what it is about them, I just find them difficult for some reason. My only guess is that Crash doesn't jump nearly as far or high as Mario Banjo Kazooie for the platformers that I grew up with. In Twin Sanity, Crash controls like you would expect them to, so the difficulty which is found in previous Crash games carries over into this game. Depending on your view, this is good and bad. On the good, it's nice to play a game which doesn't handhold too much. Sure, in boss fights it blatantly tells you how to defeat them, but it doesn't stop the rest of the game putting up a good fight. So if you're looking for a challenge, buy this game. However, I can't help but feel that the difficulty of the game may turn some off of it, which is bad because it's a game that deserves to be played. My friend Big Snake sometimes calls the game Crash Bandicoot Prepare to Die Edition. I think it's a fitting name. Luckily, lives are normally in high supply, and the charm the game has will keep you playing through it, even if the dying does piss you off. Going back to the point of how the levels have been opened up, this also allows for more interesting vistas and locations to explore. The result is an incredibly bright, colourful and cartoony art style to the game, which never ceases to look amazing throughout. It's not just locations that look nicer now though, character models have also been vastly improved. For starters, Crash looks really cool in this game, his face pulling off a range of emotions which makes sure you know what he is doing and how he feels, even though he doesn't speak during the game. Also, his animations are just amusing to watch. However, Crash pales in comparison compared to Cortex. Now, I don't know whose idea it was to make Cortex an active part of the gameplay narrative throughout the game, but whoever's it was, I want to go over there and shower them in my love. Having Cortex with you throughout the game is an incredible idea. Before Twinsanity, he was just the main bad guy, as such you never really got to interact with him until the end of the game, where you just hurt him. In Twinsanity, by having him work with you, it allows his personality to develop, showing a side of Cortex we have have never seen beforehand. Really, Cortex is the best character in the whole game, he is just an absolute joy to watch and listen to. His voice acting is superb, his facial animations are hilarious, his dialogue is top notch. Seriously, just watch. The check bounced! Are you sure? Well, the past few years have kind of been slow. Wrath of Cortex didn't do as well as we'd hoped and... Fish? <laughs> 
Cortex really makes this game for me, without him it would be nowhere near as good. Though that isn't to say this game isn't without its flaws, the game has a somewhat absurd fetish with making you blow up pointless boxes of Nitro and TNT. Guaranteed, before you can make the jump over to a platform, you need to blow up some TNT that is lying on it first for no reason. It's never explained as to why all these boxes are here. Why? What does this add to the gameplay? Nothing! It just elongates the game by pointlessly padding it out! Probably to disguise the fact that this game is pretty short. Not helping the game's length is the fact that in some places it makes you wonder if it was even bug tested. There are so many places where it's possible to skip entire levels it's ridiculous. Also the game never really explores the concept of two arch rivals having to work together against an intergalactic threat of... chickens? What the fuck? They just accept that they have to work together, which I find odd seeing how much they try to kill each other in previous games, and I think some opportunities for some clever dialogue were missed out because of this. So there you have it, Crash Twinsanity. When you get this game you won't be getting your average Crash game, it's a lot more open than that. The game controls great, so any time you die chances are it's your own fault. The music? Oh yeah, that reminds me. LISTEN TO THIS MUSIC! <laughs> It's absolutely friggin' incredible! The graphics are full of charm and the whole game feels incredibly well polished and is definitely worth your time. Can't wait for the sequel! I take that back.